أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, I welcome everyone again to the third session of our Ramadan series on the spiritual, spiritual traits in the garden of the Ikram of Ibn Afaila as uh, our normal uh, protocol and observance of um, prayer let's recite together the Surah Fatah Dugu Chapa so quickly, um, this is a continuation of um, the program. We've done the, the aphorisms number 88 and 89. I'm going to continue today. And so uh, our first speaker is Dr. Mohammed Ida Shafi, who is an, uh, an, an, an alumnus of Al Azhar University, Egypt, and is a lecturer at the Faculty of Islamic and Contemporary Studies, University, Sultan Zainal Abidin. Uh, so uh, before handing over to him, I just really want to remind us that we should keep our mind muted. And this is what we are going to observe and put in mind that that's that we're expecting to come in. So we don't need to record or take any screenshots, inshallah. The session has been recorded and we we'll continue to share the playlist for, for us to, to assess and watch at our own convenience. So without further ado, I'll just ask Dr. Spencer. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi sami'an alim al-basiri min ash-shaytani rajim من حمسه ونفثه ونفثه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي بجاه سنقرؤك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى آمين الإخوة الأعزاء المستمعين الكريم الأفاضل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى the first and foremost وعليكم السلام uh, We adore him with all forms of adorations we glorify him, we thank him, we appreciate him in all ramifications. We do seek for his blessings and mercies in abundance being showered upon the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his households, companions, and followers until the day of reckoning. I mean, and uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, the IC uh, organizers and the officials. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Those who are around now and those who are going to join later and those who are going to come across these uh, recordings much later, inshallah. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of us. And we also ask him to equally extend our blessings in this month of Ramadan and beyond. I mean, uh, in continuation of our uh, Ramadan spiritual treats, in the guiding of the Hekam of Ibn Atta'illah as secondary for the Ramadan of this year, 1445, uh, today is... Uh, approximately the 13th of Ramadan in uh, most part of the world, but in our own part of the world here, it was 12th of Ramadan. We are just on the 13th night, night number 13. So which is equivalent to day number 13 of the greater part of the world. So there is nothing, there is no, uh, no contradiction in that. It is just a, uh, based on the timings. Uh, so we are seven hours ahead of the most part that are having 13th today. So, and uh, that is just the reason. But inshallah, we hope our end of the this year will be the same day. 
as we are going to fast uh, 29, and we expect you guys to fast 30, inshallah. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, so this is uh, just by the way, all right, for correspondence purpose. And the, the theme for today's discussion is uh, obedience versus sinfulness. Uh, obedience versus disobedience. Uh, so what is meant by this theme is very simple. Uh, many a time, obedience leads to disobedience. And some other time, disobedience leads us to righteousness. So as we are going to see, there are many instances of this in Quran al Karim. Uh, we are, I'm just going to reiterate on two only, but we can as well mention and start from the uh, from the early life of humanity on the earth. So starting from Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. So that is uh, where obedience versus sinfulness started from. And by the way, our aphorism today is going to be uh, aphorism number 95. Okay, inshallah, aphorism number 95. So which is based on that. So now, uh, on Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam and Sayyiduna Yunus alayhi salam, before we come to that, we look into the historical background of uh, obedience and disobedience. So that started from uh, the early time of humanity, from our great grandfather uh, or the father of humanity, Adam alayhi salam. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to create him, we remember in the Quran, Allah says, Inni khalikum basharam mintin, aw inija ilum fil ardi khalifa, specifically, Allah mentioned the art, the, the heart. I am going to make a vice durant. I'm going to make a representative on the land. So Allah specifically mentioned land. But when he created Adam, he placed him in the garden of Adni. Okay, in the garden of Adni, Jannah to Adni. So they are called, biblically, they call it the garden of Eden. Garden of Eden, there's nothing called garden of Eden. It is Jannah to Adni. So the Janet of Adni. So Allah placed him there, uh, living his life and uh, all that. Uh, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he will not do anything without a reason. So uh, Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam, has not, at that particular time, he had not offended Allah. He had not had any cause to be sent onto the, onto the earth, onto the land to live there alone okay with nothing so uh and allah gave instructions uh do this don't do this uh what allah asked him to do uh was 99.99 percent .99%, okay like eat all this 99.99 percent .99%, but do not eat this 0 0.01001 percent .001%. okay now uh what, why would someone leave 99.99% and go to 0.01%? So that was uh, the reason for Alam and Hakuma until Kuma Shajarata. Okay, what I call Lakuma and Shaitan Lakuma and Mubin. So have I not warned you that you should not go near this, uh, those, uh, those three, uh, that three that are forbidding you from, from going to? Uh, and I find also told you that uh, Shaitan is uh, a very clear enemy for both of you. Uh, then uh, so by that and by the happenstance, so that caused the primordial intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, primordial, uh, primordial uh, background of creation of Adam alayhi salam. Okay, for as Allahumma shaitan. So according to some of us, so that is just a cause, a sabab and musabab. Okay, it's just a cause. Uh, but Allah eventually 
by whether Adam salam would have eaten from that tree or if he, he, he would not have eaten, Allah would still send him on the, on the heart because it was the heart that Allah promised. But here, the point here of, about obedience was the sinfulness is that uh, uh, sometimes when we commit an atrocity, a sinful act, that sinful act in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater in benefit for us than any than some other act of obedience. Okay, so if Adam alayhi salam was to have listened all the while and without committing that eating of the fruit, so uh, he would not have gained the opportunity and the and the forgiveness that he has asked from Allah and gotten the acceptance of it. Okay, by saying, Rabbana Zola, call our Rabbana Zolamna and Fusana, in Lam Tafirana, like what are Hamna, Lana Kunana Minal Hosirin. So Allah forgive them for Allah Huma Anaha and so on and so forth. So that is the first uh, instance. Now let's go to the story of Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam. Uh, I think the ayah is there. Okay, uh, starting from, in sur this is in Surah Tul Kaf, starting from Surah uh, verse number 60. Uh, through verse number 82. I'm not going to read the old verses, okay, but when we, the, the background of the, of the, of the story, of the narration is that according to Mufassiruna, uh, they call it Sababun Nusul, the reason, the revelational reason, okay, of this uh, narration. Uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam was in the gathering, uh, let's say in the wars, he was giving admonition to people and talking to people, and one of the gathering asked him, uh, by chance and uh, by incident, uh, Ya Musa, hal ala zohri al-ardi alam, yan rajulun alamu minka, or arifu minka. So is there on the face, on, this, on the surface of the heart, anyone who is more knowledgeable or more virtuous than you are? So uh, Sayyiduna Musa, alayhi salam, by the virtue of being prophet of Allah, by the virtue of being a messenger of Allah, by the virtue of being a pious one to Allah, by the virtue of his closeness to Allah, he looked right and left and front and back and thought, oh no, who would that be? There is none who is that knowledgeable, as knowledgeable as I am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately reprimanded him. No, don't say that. Do you not read that? So there is above all those who claim knowledge, another person that is not more knowledgeable than them. So by this, you have to go on a, on a journey, on a, on, a, on a journey for seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge as a prophet, as your messenger, Allah says, that is my word and you follow. So immediately, Nabi Musa alayhi salam, uh, he called his, uh, his, uh, for one of his followers, uh, uh, his name, according to Mufassirun, they call him, you shall be known. You shall be known. So uh, according to some narration, he also became a prophet, but his name is not uh, mentioned specifically as a prophet, but his name is mentioned in Mufassir, in Tafsir, Yusha. Now he called Yusha by telling him, uh, So Allah, the, the, only, the only clue Allah gave him was, take your belongings or whatever you can take, go to the tributary tributary when we were learning geography we we'll, I, I, we'll learn we come across that uh, word tributary tributary is a place where two big oceans or river join together that is where they call tributary okay and uh, uh, i wouldn't know whether it is maraj al bahrain yal takiyan I wouldn't know whether that is the inter interpretation of the tributary, but that is what they told us in, taught us in geography. So uh, Allah told him, you go to a place, you, you, go to, you, you have to go journey on the sea, and until you get to a tributary, where two oceans, two different oceans join together, two big oceans join together, then... Uh, you are going to find, you are going to see a sign, you are going to see someone, one of our beloved servant, waiting for you to teach you that which you know not. Oh. Then, how am I going to know? 
So just go, but when you are going, go along with dead and dried fish. Dead, dried, frozen, uh, yeah, fish. And wherever you, you arrive and the fish touches and turns alive and wakes up, so that is the place that you're going to find that servant of Allah, uh, our beloved servant. So for now, so that is all the instruction now. So Nabi Musa had to take Yosha along and went uh, and went there. Uh, we know all the story of uh, the narration and all that. Uh, he went on the on the on the yacht on the canoe or boat or ship. Then he started uh, damaging a part of it. Later he gave reason. And uh, secondly, he, he he saw a fishing boy and chopped off his head and threw, pushed him in the river. And thirdly, they arrived at an uncompleted building and he had they had to rebuild it because of uh, of, of of his treasure beneath the beneath the the, the 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 house. So all this he had won Nabi Yumosa alayhi salam. Inna kalanta statu amaiya sobra. So we remember land that he used for him to have known that Nabi Musa would never. He said, "Would you would never learn?" He didn't say la. He did not say. He said, "Learn to start it, Amma. You will never be able to be patient with me. You will never. But no problem. I accept you as a student because I I got instruction that I should teach you what you don't know. So now with all that, uh, all all these uh, lessons. What is the what is the reason for all this lesson? If Nabi Musa alayhi salam did not, uh, if he had not over, overstepped in his answer that he gave to that uh, adherent, that he was the only and the most knowledgeable, there was no one other. So by that, that was a grievous sin that he committed. And it was through that grievous sin that he learned so much that he knew to that, that he learned and for us also today that we learn that we have to be patient so uh many a time as we're going to see in the aphorism uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happens tense uh make us to commit a sinful act but however he wants to lead us to a righteous path by making us committing that as well it, it may not be by our wish but uh, we, we may not even know the reason why we have committed it, but uh, one way or the other, it will happen. Then by that, it will be a cause for our righteousness. So it happens. And some other time, uh, we, uh, we, 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 we uphold many acts of obedience, but in the sight of Allah, they are not just acceptable to him. He just doesn't want to accept them. Okay, another instance here before we go, the case of Nabi Yunus alayhi salam. So when he was, when he was sent to, the, to his people, and this is in Surah to Sofat, uh, that is immediately chapter after Surah to Yasin, so 139 to 148. Uh, the case is Nabi Yunus was sent to his people to warn them, and uh, he tried all he could, and uh, still they did not uh, listen to him. So he, he got fed up. So he promised them of uh, the reign of the anger, the, the anger and the wrath of Allah. He promised them, he gave them seven days. That I give you seven days, I, I promise you seven days. In seven days, rain of sadness and stones will, will rain on you and all of you will be perished. Those, those people say, okay, no problem, it's okay. Just uh, uh, seven days is enough for us to do whatever we want to do to, to, to prepare for ourselves. So, Nabi Yuna Yunus, he did not carry Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along. He did not carry Allah. So the first thing, uh, uh, releasing that statement, he didn't carry him along. So only after issuing the statement, then he went to the place of his uh, invocation with Allah. Then he told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the God is saying, you have heard what I said, and I've promised them that we're going to punish them. So do not disappoint them. Please punish them in seven days. Allah says, no. You are not to tell me what I should do. I send you to them. I did not ask you to promise them any wrath. I said, continue talking to them. And I said, but they didn't listen to me. Then they are stoning me. Like, yeah, okay, okay. So you do not listen to me. You should have just come back to me and listen to what I would say. So, okay, anyway, anyhow, I have promised them and it has to happen. 
<laughs> so, a divine argument, okay, as Allah wished it. And uh, so first day, second day, third day, and you know the people, they will always come to his door mouth and say, oh, uh, you know, okay, uh, what, what about what you promised us? We have not seen anything. Mm -hmm. This is the first day. This is the second day, third day, fourth day. And the sixth day, Nabi Yunus still realized that Allah was not going to budge. He was not going to punish these people. So he carried his luggage, packed everything. He left these people. And uh, uh, whether to save his own self from disgrace or to escape the wrath, because he knew uh, Allah will not leave him, forsake him. So he left and he was journeying on the sea. And it happened as it happened, as we heard in the, uh, we, we, we learned in the story that uh, something happened there was turbulence on the on the sea, and uh, they had to uh, uh, check everybody's conscience. Who was the one that uh, it was the slave, the, the the servant that escaped from the master? And uh, by happenstance, they did not check. Uh, they knew him as a pious, and did not check him. They did not even suspect him for anything. But on checking every, every other person, and including the, the 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 voyager, the driver of the of the ship and uh, they said, okay, this is, there's no one here. Then just by a thought, they said, okay, why not we check Sheikh? Let's, mm -hmm. let's also check Sheikh and maybe we don't know, but we're not suspecting anything. He's a man of God. <laughs> I mean, let's just see and check his name, put his name on the scale and let's see. Immediately before even finishing his, uh, his name, they realized that he was the servant, he was a slave that escaped from his master. Oh, mm -hmm. so immediately you know, realized the danger in that, and it was thrown in the in the sea. And there, a fish was already praying fervently for Allah's food, for sustenance. So it was hungry. The fish has been hungry for a while, and it just opened its mouth and asking Allah to to sustain it. And there comes the uh, prophetic food into its mouth. And immediately the food came, Allah warned the fish, your stomach shall never, shall never digest this one. Just keep it all around in the sea. So the, 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 the fish was, was feeling discomfort all over. Then it was later, now, the first ever time Nabi Yunus alayhi salam will ever understand the importance of repenting and seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina So there is none except you, O Allah. I have wronged myself. I'm the one that I'm being unjust to myself. So forgive me and so and that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Falawla anna hu kana min al uh, I did not that he was, uh, he, he, he found himself among those who glorified us, who sought for forgiveness, because he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka in, inni kuntu mina zolimi. Subhanaka. So, la ula anna hu kena min al musabihin, la labitha fi batnihi ila yomi yuba'athun. He would have dwelled inside that hood until eternity. Until eternity. Now, uh, Allah saved him and uh, made the fish or whale, according to some narration, to spit him out. Okay, because the fish also was not was feeling discomfort, so he spit it out on the river bank, and uh, there he fell on his face directly, cried to God, and Allah saved him. And Allah told him and informed him, "Go back to the people. I have guided them to the right." And there, the people were waiting for him at the outskirts of the town, of the city already, yearning for him, waiting to welcome him and see him. So that was here, without the uh, the sinful act that uh, we cannot, of course, say the prophets or messengers of Allah were sinful, but we, without that disobedience, so we would not have learned the act of la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inne kuntu minazolimin. 
Now, so these are the the the, the Quranic, the ayah that preambles the uh, the the aphorism number ninety five. Now, aphorism aphorism number ninety five of Ibn uh, Ibn Atta'illah as Sakandari, it reads, okay, and I read as presented. ربما فتح لك باب الطاعة وما فتح لك باب القبول وربما قضى عليك بالذنب فكان سببا في الوصول I read again ربما فتح لك باب الطاعة وما فتح لك باب القبول وربما قضى عليك بالذنب now, uh, Ibn Atta'illah as secondary, he is fond of using laka, 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 you, 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 in throughout the aphorisms. Because he is directing all those conversations to his self, to his self, to his uh, self, to his soul, as a murid, taking himself as an example of the murid. Okay, the seeker of the truth. So that is the reason why he uses laka, you, 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 throughout the, the aphorism. Now he says, Rubama fataha laka baba atoa. Okay, in between fataha laka, we have Allahu. Rubama fataha lahu laka baba toa thing. So uh, perhaps Allah opens the door of obedience to you. But he has not opened the door of acceptance to you. Perhaps sometime he destined on you to commit a sinful act. And that commission of sinful act will be a reason and a factor leading you towards him. So that is literally. Okay, sometimes he opens the door of obedience for you, but he does not open the door of acceptance to you. Or sometimes he condemns you to commit a sin, and it turns out to be a curse for union with God. Now here, what is the explanation here? In the first stanza of this aphorism, So we have the comparison between al-umur al-shari'iyya wal-umur al-ruhiyya. So uh, a comparison between Sharia instructions as stipulated in the Quran, in the Bay, uh, in the I'm not saying Bible, in the uh, Taurat, Injil, Zabur, okay, uh, the Sharia, the uh, Sharia actually a very narrow path and narrow way and uh, rules and regulation, let's say, that we are to follow. Now, the those are words, letters written there to be followed. But there are some other aspects of that that are spiritual that are not directly noticed in the word in the rules and regulation. So sometimes we might pray, we might siyam, we might fast, we might uh, exec execute all forms of obedience, but us, uh, but still we do not find acceptance of those in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So that is. Uh, that is meant to say it is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept what we present to him. So all we know is we should do it as he asked us to do in Sharia, but the acceptance does not uh, follow that once we have done it, it will be accepted. No. So that is just the instruction there. And some other time, uh, the other stanza of the aphorism. So we might see some people committing sins and atrocities and leading uh, a life that is not wanted. Okay, we then we think that we are better than them because they are not doing what we are doing. 
they are not praying as we pray. They are not uh, they are not so uh, suyam as we are suyam. We, they are not doing what we are doing. We think that, but it might happen. It might be in the sight of Allah that we that we think that we are on that path, we are actually not being accepted fully. But the one that is that we see or we uh, we, we refer we refer to as a sinner is actually on its way and on its path on the right path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the concept of palatu zaku and fusakum inna Allah ala mubimanitako. You shall not exonerate yourself. He is a law that, that only knows those who are pious and conscious of him among you. So that is the literal translation. Now let's go into Sheikh Abdul Majid uh, Asharnobi, uh, one of the commentators of the aphorisms of Ikam uh, of uh, Ikam Atwa Illa as secondary, what he has to say on this before we go to conceptual message. He says, Anna ta'ata rubama korana ha afatun kodihatun fil ikhlas fiha. Many a time, the act of obedience may be accompanied, okay, the, uh, some act of obedience may be accompanied by afatun kodihatun some uh some let's say in uh, some vices some vices that affect our sincerity okay we are yes we are doing the act of obedience the moment we hear a then hayya ala salat hayya ala al -fala. so we 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 tend to leave everything then we rush to the to the masjid we want to pray now you have someone whose last hope was you settling his problem and signing his paper before you go to solat. And if you go to the solat, you will not have enough time to get those papers and the other processes done for the rest of the day. It might be postponed for another week or another month or never be appro get approved. And by, no, 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 I will never waste my time for you because of this. Now, uh, yes, it is an act of obedience because we want to execute it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, so a kind of vices have come into that that affects our sincerity. By so the person will say, is it only you that prays? Don't we ask all, 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 all other Muslims that also pray and they are, so, they are lenient, they are more, more, more understanding than you are? So by that statement itself, we might have gotten the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against our disobedience. So for example, by being pompous, okay, being arrogant of what we do, and suppressing and ridiculing those who are not doing what we are doing. Mm. I, I've seen, a, I've seen a, a, a many a time some people uh, ridiculing my layer, uh, like um, like uh, from all these years that we have, you have been, you know, why are you not? It has not been even one. So you talk less of two or three. Two. I said, okay, it is a lot that has not given me that. I, I actually hoped for it. But uh, without knowing anything, um, something happened to our fellow. I don't know. I didn't get angry. I didn't get anything. But I was just like, oh, yeah, Allah, I'm praying for this also too. Why don't you make it just uh, too, uh, a lot and not for me? But uh, something happened. Something happened. The, the, uh, our brother got into some issue and uh, medically they had to shift all the, all the layer that our brother had. So now my own layer is still there, but our brother doesn't have a, a layer <laughs> because they have to take care of some uh, underneath the screen uh, of, of, of that. I, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. Now, this is just uh, an example. Just a kind of arrogance, and then we suppressing and ridiculing some other people who are not doing who we think that they are not doing what they are what you are doing. So due to this, due to arrogance and ridiculing others who are not doing, who we think that they are not doing what we are doing, so the, the door of acceptance might not be opened for us. 
Although we think we are doing everything, but still we do not get the acceptance from it. For Obama called on a damba, uh, shida to anadam. And some other time, when we see those people who are committing sinful acts, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens their heart to understand the gravity of the gravity of what they are doing. So by that, shida to nadami. So they wholeheartedly regret their action through that sinful act. Was tisugaru nafsi? Then they hate themselves so much for doing that. Why will I do this for Allah's sake? Wa usnul antizari illallah. Then they honestly and sincerely apologize to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fayakunu sababam filu wusul. And this will be the only thing that they need to arrive at the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a time we have heard stories of people committing atrocities against Allah and crying, crying in forgiveness, and forgiveness, and they never woke up from that crying, and they end up dying in, from, from, from seeking forgiveness, even without praying one raka, even without uh, fasting any Ramadan. So, and, and the Prophet Sulaiman reported that they have been reported and recorded in the Ahlul Jannah. So, uh, the point here is, According to Sheikh Abdul Majid Asharnobi, it is not the amount of the Torah that we do. It, 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 is, act, it is actually uh, according to the sincerity accompanying the act of obedience that we are uh, doing. So that is the statement of Sheikh Abdul Majid Asharnobi. Now, what are the conceptual messages that we can take home here? All right. Uh, one, the external forms of obedience do not necessarily indicate their acceptance. Okay? Uh, we don't judge a book by its cover. So by the, yes, uh, according to Sharia, we should dress fine, we should appear fine, we should, yeah, we are doing as we could, as much as we could, but we should not condemn others. We should not condemn others outrightly that no, they are going to be the companion of El Elfire. The door of the Jannah is not in our hands. And likewise, mm -hmm. the, the entrance into the Hellfire is also not given, wow. given to us. We, we, we don't control it. Okay, As they could be filled with diseases of the heart and so on and so forth. Now, in, uh, on the other hand, external forms of disobedience do also not necessarily indicate that the person is far or ousted from the divine closeness. So those two is very those two concepts are very important. Number one, the external forms of obedience do not necessarily indicate their acceptance. Secondly, external forms of disobedience do not necessarily indicate that the person is so far or ousted from the uh, divine closeness. Okay, so we have many. Had this, uh, we have about two at this there that is mentioned there. Instance, uh, one by the Prophet Sallallahu and the other one that is uh, mentioned by one of the shayukhs, uh, inshallah. So we hope Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, grant us better understanding of that, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Now, so that is that about uh, the aphorism. Now, uh, the, okay, just, uh, that is just a continuation of the, of the conceptual, uh, okay, conceptual messages in there, okay. Some other time, the person who disobeys often seeks shelter with Allah, feeling in need, apologizes to Him, considers himself so so small, looking up to those who do not perform it. So then, by so doing, by that regression, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala draws him closer to Him, okay. So uh, that is just by that, and uh, the second part of the uh, of the presentation today, night uh, thirteen supplication here, the thirteen supplication there. So uh, it's Subhanaka uh, Antallahu al Awwalu al Akhiru. So we can recite it one hundred and fourteen forty one times after perfect wudu. 
observation of two rakas uh, at least. Four is okay, the more the better. Uh, then after the taslima, we recite istighfar, la ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah, as salatu ala nabi. Then we start reciting, subhanaka anta allahu al awalu al akhiru. Okay, so there are many benefits as reported in the Kutub uh, al Ahadis for reciting that. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the benefits therein. So 141 mm. is just the selected, it could be more or it could be less. So when we are in on work, when we are doing exercise, when we are uh, in the office, when we are driving, so we can always say it subhanaka anta allahu al awal al akhir. So lastly, uh, uh, about for malaria, for those who are affected with, with, with malaria, okay, so this is just part one. Tomorrow we are going to give part two of the treatment of malaria. So there is a, a cotton plant, plant of the cotton, the tree of the cotton. So we get the leaves. So when we, uh, the leaves after, after, uh, after uh, squeezing it, okay, after squeezing it, uh, uh, it, it, it becomes like um, dry, it grows a little bit, okay? So we, we need the, uh, uh, some amount of the leaves of the cotton plant, okay? And uh, we pound it uh, or we grind it with, uh, with, uh, with clean water, okay? Uh, after grinding it or squeezing it or blending it if we can, okay? So we sieve the water. So the water that we sieve, we add lime juice to it. Okay, we mix it, we add lime juice to it. Then we allow it to settle for one or two hours. So after that, so then uh, the person can start drinking a cup, okay, uh, three times a day. So inshallah, with that uh, uh, cure will be granted be So that is... Uh, and one of the benefits that we have in nature, in natural herbs that Allah has granted to us be in la. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us better understanding and better usage of all of them. So bihada wallahu ta'ala alam jazakumullahu khairan for all the time. Uh, dear, we, uh, I'm going to stop here. I put all of you and myself under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whose protection nothing is lost and Missed. As Taudi Okum one of the Firi Ayatillah, he led the La Yudi Uwada in Ahu, was Salam Walekum, or Rahmatullahi, or Barakatu. Walekum was Salam, or Rahmatullahi, or Barakatu. Zahmulo Heaven for the beneficial session. Nella Rodia Bonati, the other one. So uh, for my chat box, there is no uh, question, and I think already behind the shadow. So can call it a day and inshallah we'll meet tomorrow be it in so I will, I'll just say closing remarks subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdi wa inshadu ala ila ila anta istadku fa wa tulu li subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasu salamu ala nusari wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alam now bye bye assalamu alaikum shukran jazakum lakhir assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum